Okay, this, uh, this video is about using the T table, but first I'm going to review what it looks like to use the Z table. Remember the Z table, we find P values that are inside the table. And the P values are the area underneath this curve. So it's the probability of finding an observation that's to the right of a certain Z or you could think of it as the proportion of observations that are under the curve to the right of a certain z. And we find those p-values by looking at specific z's. So if I said, uh, if I wanted to find the p-value associated with a z of 1.44, I go down the z column here and find the first couple digits, 1.4, and then I go across to 4. So it's 1.44. The probability, the p-value for one, a z of 1.44 is 0 0.0749. So I would write p-value equals 0 0.0749 up here, pointing to the area. Now, t-tables are different. Let me go to the t-table. In the t-table, the t, okay, t's and z's are pretty much the same. There is a p-value associated with every t, and there's a p-value associated with every z. The difference with the, in the t-table is that the t-values themselves are what's in the table. Whereas with the Z table, it was the P values that were inside the table. So this inside the table, these entries inside the table are values of T. In other words, they're the numbers across here. So if you say, I want to find out uh, the probability uh, or a P value of a T of 1.440, then you find that t value inside the table, so it's right here, and you say to yourself, um, well you find it, in order to find that you also have to know the degrees of freedom, so which we'll talk about if we haven't talked about it already. So you're going to find your degrees of freedom first, okay? And you say, after you figure out your degrees of freedom, now what is degrees of freedom? It's the number of observations minus 1. Okay, so if our problem has 20 degrees of freedom, then we can look at these t values. These t values, or critical t values, are associated with different p values. And the p values we see are the little subscripts here on the t's. Okay, so um, a p-value of 0 0.10, which is the little subscript here, it's associated with um, a t-value of 1.356 if we're looking at 12 degrees of freedom. So if our problem has 12 degrees of freedom and we are interested in a p-value of 0 0.10, then we go down here and we find that the critical t value is 1.356. Okay? So that's how you use a t table. Let me do one more, one more problem. Okay, let's say we have uh, degrees of freedom of 60. Okay? So I'm going to be using this row, I know, 60. All right, and according to my problem, um, uh, my p-value, or the proportion of all the observations that I want to the right, is 0.05. Okay? So I'm going to go down the column where the little subscript is 0.05, down to the degrees of freedom row, and find that my t-value is 1.671. Okay. So that is the t, val the t score or the t value at 60 degrees of freedom and 
a p-value of 0.05. Okay? Now, what we've done so far is we've talked about p-values that are just in one tail of the distribution, right? So if the p-value is 0.05, we're saying that 5% uh, or 0.05 of the observations are below the curve at this point and over. But in some of our problems, they're going to be two-tailed tests. That's what we call them, two-tailed tests, which means that we need to also account for the possibility of having observations to the left, on the left side of the curve. Okay, so that's why there's this column up here, this column here that says confidence level. If we're going to allow point, let's look at this column here. If we're going to allow 0.05 or 5% of the observations to be to the, at this t value and over, we can also want to allow for 5% of the observations to be uh, symmetrically at minus t and to the left. So that 5% of the observations are here and 5% of the observations are here. Okay, and that's why you add those two up and you get 10% of the observations and that's, those are found underneath the confidence level column of 10%. Okay, so basically if we're just looking at one corner or one end, our p-value is right here. Okay, if we're going to use both ends, then we add these p-values together, 0.05 and 0.05, to get 0.10 or 10%. And that means we've got 10% here and here, and then 90% in between. And that's why we've got this 90% column here. Okay? And if you're, when we're using confidence intervals, it'll be a lot more clear. Okay, so that's how you use the t-table. The, really, the key thing to remember is the p-values for one tail are right here in this little subscript. Here, and here, and here, okay? And the t-values are inside the table. So these are the t-values. That's different than the z-table, okay? Alrighty, that's it. Bye.